you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for speaking with me. This was, uh, I hate to say incredible, but this was a harrowing death. And so from you kind of being, you know, expert volcanology, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. What I wanted to know was what went wrong? What were, were there messages that were kind of crossed over? What were the signs that were missing in order for this whole thing to have happened while people were on the volcano? Well, uh, a volcano of that type and volcanoes come in several different types, but a volcano of the type of Huacari is uh, inherently dangerous. Uh, it's a volcano that can uh, explode, can put out what we call pyroclastic flows, which are flows of hot gases and ash, uh, which are the most deadly thing a volcano can put out pretty much. Uh, so going to that volcano was dangerous. Now, the um, probability that something would happen when tourists were on the island was very low, uh, but still you're taking a risk uh, going there. Uh, in fact, I went there in 2014, so just a few years um, before that disaster. And as a volcanologist, I was aware uh, of the potential danger. And uh, I was watching very carefully for any signs of any change. I was uh, uh, planning my escape route. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, and I think that, uh, yes, taking tourists to the island was, um, uh, was a risk. And uh, I'm not sure that uh, every tourist who went there was actually aware uh, of the right. potential danger. Um, so it, it is, you know, in one hand, you want people to go to places that are wonderful and they can really appreciate nature. In the other hand, there are places that are pretty dangerous. Now you said, pre you're speaking, you were saying that you look out for the signs. It was even dangerous back then. So what was it that kind of we are, as a collective, should be looking for if we ever kind of encounter a volcano? Well, um, as I said, there are many different types of volcanoes. So right. um, with, uh, you know, a volcano like those in Hawaii and Iceland that are, they're pretty gentle on the whole. And uh, so they, they're not explosive. They put out lava flows, uh, um, sometimes uh, small, um, uh, not quite even explosions, uh, uh, things that, uh, uh, pieces of lava coming out that uh, uh, we call um, uh, lava fountains. There are volcanoes like Stromboli in Italy where they have small explosions that just send out uh, fragments of lava that we call bombs. And as long as you stay out of range, you're fine. So there, there are different types, but the types that are really dangerous are the potentially explosive volcanoes. Uh, and Wakari is one. Uh, so uh, there was there, there was no uh, nothing that uh, someone could have said that morning. Um, uh, you know, this is going to have an explosion. Uh, one thing that I heard, and that's in the documentary, is that there was a a change in the activity, uh, and uh, um, you know, and and people maybe some people, they, they, they stayed to look at it or take pictures. And if there is a change in activity like that, you just have to get out of there. Um, and, uh, but even then they might not have survived because um, uh, it's a matter of the timing and the pyroclastic flow and whether you can, um, uh, you, can uh, you know, get away uh, in time. Uh, in the documentary, there was a, a helicopter pilot who actually mentioned that he ran to the ocean and dove in. And that's actually, um, uh, you know, that, that's what I would have done. <laughs> uh, but, you know, even then the pyroclastic flow is going above uh, your head. And uh, so he had to hold his breath until he saw a little bit of light and then he came up. Uh, to breathe. Uh, that, that type of 
uh, uh, activity of pyroclastic flow. Uh, it's so deadly. Um, the, the signs and how you were saying that it was hard to look for, but what I really wanted to know, kind of the greater assumption that people have is, you know, that with the volcanoes, oh, it's lava, that's gonna get you. But with this, we learned that there was no lava flow. So can you kind of talk about, they talked about the, the boiling, um, who was a pyroclastic, what exactly does that mean? And how does that really affect the body? Oops, uh -oh. Uh -oh. hello, are you, you there? Yes, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, uh, just sorry, my, my cat walked over key the keyboard. Uh, so did somebody. Uh, uh, <laughs> the hazards of working from home. Um, okay, so um, uh, volcanoes can put out a lot of different things and lava flows are uh, usually not dangerous. I mean, you can um, get away from a lava flow a lot of the time really easily. Um, you know, it's actually even possible to walk over a lava flow if it's not uh, uh, moving very fast. Uh, and uh, uh, so lava flows are not really uh, a major concern in terms of, uh, uh, of hazard. I mean, not that some things couldn't happen, but uh, that's not what we worry about uh, the most. Uh, what we really worry about are explosions. Uh, and uh, uh, if, if there is a big explosion with rocks falling on your head uh, and pyroclastic flows. Pyroclastic flows are uh, flows of hot gas and ash and, uh, and, and boulders. Uh, it's what happened in um, Pompeii in 79 AD, where, you know, people generally know about that. They can move extremely fast. Uh, you can't get away from them. Um, you can't even often drive away from them. I mean, they they really can go at um, uh, uh, you know several hundred miles an hour, uh, and they are extremely deadly. Uh, you know, and it's just hot gas burns you and uh, burns your lungs, and you know it's a <laughs> it's not a good scenario. Um, so uh, people have to be extremely careful when they are uh, on a volcano that could have an explosion that could have a pyroclastic flow. Uh, and not all volcanoes uh, have pyroclastic flows or are explosive, uh, but some of them like Wakari are. Uh, so it's always been a potentially dangerous volcano. Right. And in the documentary, video was captured, you know, we had sound, firsthand accounts. Uh, can you talk about whether or not that taught us anything new about the Wakari volcano or just more about volcanoes in general? Uh, well, um, you know, I, I, I haven't heard of any uh, specific research that came out of that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's possible that I, I don't know about it. Uh, but um, but every data we have, every bit of data is good, uh, and uh, and 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 it will teach us something, and uh, including um, you know going back uh, from the date of the explosion, going back to the seismic data because uh, there was seismic data being recorded, uh, and uh, whether there was any indication. Uh, that um, uh, something was about to happen. Uh, and I read that there was a, a, a larger uh, earthquake a couple of weeks before. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, is that, could that really be uh, related? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know, but, uh, but studies of that kind are important. Uh, and, um, uh, but you know this type of volcano can um, can have a, a, a sudden activity, and uh, and that was known. Uh, it was known as a potentially pretty dangerous place. Right. And so I was wondering, how does climate change impact volcanoes? Well, there is not really a direct impact. In fact, okay. if you have a 
very large explosive eruption like what happened uh, in Krakatau in Indonesia in the late 1800s or uh, Tambora in Indonesia uh, in the early 1800s. Uh, the, um, uh, the ash and aerosols in the atmospheres can actually cause a drop in uh, global temperature. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, you know, 1815 was when the Indonesian volcano Tambora erupted, and 1816 uh, became known as the year without a summer uh, because, uh, you know, temperatures, uh, you know, had dropped, and this was in the northern hemisphere. Uh, and uh, um, so, uh, you know, volcanoes, uh, it, uh, if they are very large eruptions, they can alter the climate. Uh, but not that we are advocating having lots of big volcanic eruptions to combat climate change. But, um, but yes, the temperature does drop a, a little bit and it's temporary. Hmm. Right. Now, I believe you're in the Guinness World Book of Records for discovering over 70 volcanoes in Jupiter, I believe. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I wanted to know is, is there a vast difference from the, the, the volcanoes on our planet compared to what's out there on other planets? Yes. Um, okay, Jupiter's moon Io is the most volcanically active place in the solar system. Uh, you know, it's just got big volcanoes, uh, big calderas uh, erupting uh, all the time. Uh, and, um, and yes, I was working on the Galileo mission, that's a NASA mission, and um, with an infrared instrument, and with the infrared, we could detect heat from the volcanoes. So I kept finding all these volcanoes that people didn't know about, and, uh, uh, and uh, by coincidence, uh, you know, someone found out who knew somebody who worked for the Guinness Book of Records. And uh, in the 2006 book, there is a, a small note about me as the person who um, discovered more volcanoes than anybody mm -hmm. else anywhere. Uh, we have a new mission uh, there uh, now. Um, uh, looking at Io, so I think my record is going to get broken. <laughs> oh, very nice. <laughs> but I'm, I'm collaborating with that team, so that's, uh, that's fine. Um, there are big differences between the uh, Earth's volcanoes and volcanoes on other planets. There are also similarities. So if I just, um, you know, take uh, Jupiter's moon Io, for example, um, mm -hmm. a lot of Io's volcanoes um, uh, uh, lava lakes, and that's th those are lakes of lava inside uh, craters or, or big craters, which are called calderas. And uh, on Earth, lava lakes are pretty rare. Uh, we we have like half a dozen that that, that we know about. Um, uh, so that is a difference. On the other hand, the phenomenon itself, lava lakes, are pretty similar. Um, so, uh, you know, depending on, on the planet um, or, or moon, uh, we have uh, volcanoes that may be similar to Earth or very different. Um, in the icy moons of the outer solar system, uh, what happens, we have a very different type of volcano. We call them cryovolcanoes. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, these icy moons have a crust of ice on the surface, but then under that, they have global oceans of liquid water. And if this liquid water comes up through the ice crust and forms volcanoes, that's what we call cryovolcanism because it's cold. Uh, so in that case, the, the magma uh, is not molten rock like on Earth, but it's actually water in water with maybe some ammonia or uh, other compounds. Uh, so that's very different. In the other hand, the physics of what happens is similar. So it's, it's really fascinating. Oh, wow. So with the advancement of technology, how does that kind of help? How does that exactly kind of help you discover more volcanoes than, and than before in the past? How has that kind of changed or sped up that process? Uh, well, we have um, a more sensitive instruments. Depending on the mission, um, we may fly closer uh, to, mm -hmm. to a 
Latin like Ayo. Uh, we, we, technology is evolving all the time. Uh, so the uh, technology that uh, the Galileo spacecraft used um, and uh, uh, in the early 90s was actually, you know, pretty old compared to what we have now, uh, particularly given that, uh, you know, uh, space missions take quite some time to build. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can't always use the latest, latest. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, um, you know, we, we have new technology actually in uh, um, uh, satellites observing the earth, uh, you know, uh, monitoring ground deformation uh, on Earth. That's uh, one of the things that we use to predict, uh, you know, uh, volcanic eruptions. Uh, we have, uh, you know, networks of seismographs on, on the ground, uh, you know, on Earth. Uh, so, um, yes, technology does help us a lot. And, um, uh, and eruptions that are studied a lot again you know help the understanding of uh, of volcanoes right now can you talk about kind of the you know. positive impacts that a, a volcano <laughs> may have on the earth we think of them as big and dangerous but they do help yes uh in fact volcanoes build land uh so uh we have a a, a lot of places on earth for example the hawaiian islands are entirely due to volcanic activity. Uh, I mean, there was nothing there and the volcanoes uh, made the islands and islands along the mid-Atlantic ridge. Uh, and so volcanoes uh, build land. Um, volcanic eruptions often um, help fertilize uh, land because, uh, you know, ash is a good fertilizer. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why historically uh, people have lived uh, near volcanoes, maybe, you know, <laughs> or on volcanoes, you know, closer than they should, but it's because the, the land is uh, fertile. Um, you know, so volcanoes uh, can be destructive, uh, but volcanoes also uh, help us. Thank All you right. so much then for speaking with me. All right. Well, it's a pleasure.